So I had a conversation with a friend who we will call Michael, because that's his name. <laughs> this, this conversation happened last week, a couple weeks ago, something like that, about a big problem that he and his team had just experienced. He was pretty frustrated. His team was frustrated, his boss was frustrated, his customers were frustrated, their customers were frustrated, and I got frustrated hearing about his frustration. And now you're frustrated because I just used the word frustrated eight or nine times in one sentence. <laughs> so after a few minutes of hearing Michael's stories about how the horde of stressed out and irritated people communicated their frustrations, I asked, so Michael, what was the problem? It was a little, flummoxed, I guess that's the word I'll use. Isn't that a good word? No one ever uses that word anymore. He was a little flummoxed by my question. And he responded with a, you big dummy tone. Well, everyone is all up in arms. They're all angry. That's the problem. But people's emotional responses to a problem are not the problem. They may be a problem, but they are not the problem. <laughs> They may create other problems down the road if they're left unchecked and unmanaged, but they are not the problem. So I ask him again, what's the problem? So Michael described the problem. His team had made a mistake that resulted in a missed delivery of a key product that the customers were waiting for. And that created a workflow problem for the customer. So then I asked, well, did you fix that problem? Michael said, yes, the product is being delivered and installed right now as we speak. So I said, has it ever happened before? No, it hasn't. Could it happen again? No, I just fixed that too. Now it's not, it, not possible for that same thing to happen again. Good, I said. Did you tell the customer? Yes, Michael said. We just told the customer just before I hopped on the phone with you. Good. Problem solved but they're still angry, Michael said with frustration. Huh, so people's emotional reaction is not the problem. It's certainly not a problem that we can solve. So here's the point of this story. Use this all day long, every day long, every time you experience a problem. One, ask yourself, what's the problem? What's the actual problem. Here's a little hint. The actual problem is never someone's emotional reaction. In Michael's case, the product wasn't delivered because it wasn't ordered. That was the problem. It's pretty easy to figure out a solution to that. So they jumped on it and they solved the problem within a couple of hours. Here's a second idea. Once you decide, once you determine what the problem is, work that problem. What's the problem? It's almost never people's emotions. Work the problem. What's the problem? It's usually not the first thing you think of. It's usually something that's under that. It's not hard to find it if you pause a hot minute and think about it. And again, it's usually not people's reaction to the problem then work that problem. By the way, make sure that you communicate with the irritated people while you're solving the problem. We often mess up right here. We don't want to communicate with people who are having a strong negative reaction to a problem. We don't want to keep them in the loop. I get that. It's unpleasant. They're angry. They're irritated. They say stuff, <laughs> but do it anyway. What's the problem? Work the problem. Communicate, even if it's unpleasant. There you go. Have fun with this. Leadership is hard, but it doesn't have to be hard. Don't make it harder than it needs to be by working the wrong problem. <laughs> Small change, big difference right away. Here's to you.